Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video where today we are talking about slope intercept form of a linear equation. Now this equation, y equals mx plus b, has two really important parts, the slope and the y-intercept, and that's why it's called slope intercept form. Because just looking at an equation in this order, we see the slope, the slope is being multiplied by our variable x, we have our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is the number that's just the constant in the equation. So x and y represent a point that's on the actual line. m is our slope. Now, we did a previous lesson on slope, so we should already know a couple ways, actually three ways, to calculate slope. Slope can be calculated on the coordinate plane by doing rise over run. How much am I going up or down, and how much to the right or left that I'm going. So if I set up that ratio, that would be my slope. I can also calculate slope by looking at a table and calculating my change in y and dividing it by the change in x, which is really the same thing as rise over run, or I can actually use my slope formula, subtract the y values over subtracting the x values. And rise over run, delta y over delta x, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, they literally mean the exact same thing. It's the difference in y over the difference in x. What's happening with the y values? what's happening with my x values. Now, the y-intercept is always a coordinate point of 0, y, and whatever that y value is the b value in my form. So it's always also the starting point for graphing. So if I give us an equation in slope-intercept form, that y-intercept is where we start the graph, and then we continue on with slope. Now, the first two skills that we're going to be taking a look at are um, if I ask you to graph, given the slope and the y-intercept, and if the slope or y-intercept happens to be zero. So here in this first equation, uh, first equation that we need to write rather, it says m is going to be equal to two and b is going to be equal to one. So this would mean here that my equation would be y equals two x plus one. My m is two, my b is one. What it means to graph this is now to first plot my y-intercept. So that's always the first thing that we do. We plot the y-intercept of 1. We then go ahead and we plot the slope of 2. Now, a slope of 2 really is 2 over 1 as a fraction. So that's telling me to rise 2. So from this y-intercept, I go up 2 units, and then there's a positive 1. So that's going to tell me to go to the right, run 1. That's what a slope of 2 would look like, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, to the right 1, rather. Instead of going up and to the right, I can extend this graph by going down and to the left. Down 2 to the left one. Down 2 to the left one. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to draw a line straight through. Okay. I should have some arrows at either end of my line, and that is my graph. Now, if an equation actually has a slope of 0, that's interesting. So I go ahead. I would write this equation as y equals... 0x, and then it's negative 4, so minus 4. Now, 0 times x is kind of ridiculous, because if I have 0x, then it's just 0. And then it's 0 minus 4, which is just negative 4. So this equation is actually just y equals negative 4. And if I go to graph that, a y-intercept of negative 4 would be down here. And a slope of 0, we learned, is a horizontal line. So this right here... A slope of 0 is actually what y equals negative 4 looks like. Let's try some more problems. So here we have m is equal to, I'm going to keep myself right in the middle here, that's a good spot, y, um, m is equal to 1 half and b is equal to negative 3. So this equation would be y equals 1 half x minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and plot my y-intercept first, that's always the first thing that we do. And then to plot my slope of 1 half, that would mean to go from this point up 1 to the right 2. Up 1 to the right 2. Instead of going up and to the right, I can go down and to the left, down and to the left. I'm going to go ahead and connect those points. And that is the equation of my line. Let's try the next one. This would be y equals negative 3 fourths. Now here's the key. When you're dealing with a negative fraction, my I will always strongly suggest send the negative to the numerator. It technically can go to either. It can't go to both because then it would be a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. 
But I always tell my students, send that negative to the numerator and then just keep it moving. So now if I go to graph this, I start at my y-intercept of 2 and then a slope of negative 3 fourths would be instead of going up 3, a negative 3 tells me to go down 3 units. So 1, 2, 3 and then positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Instead of going down 3 to the right 4, I can also go up 3 to the left 4. Let's connect those up. And that is the equation of my line. Let's take a look at these two. All right, so slope is negative 2. So y equals negative 2x. My y-intercept is 0. Now, I think we can agree when you do plus 0 at the end of an equation, it's unnecessary. Whoops. And so this would really become y equals negative 2x. Now that's a direct variation, y equals kx. We should be very familiar with that. If it's a zero for my y-intercept, then we know that obviously that's going to be the origin. A slope of negative 2. Negative 2 is really negative 2 over 1. So that would tell me to go down 2 units to the right 1 unit. Down 2 units to the right 1 unit. That's a negative slope, guys. I can continue going in the other directions, and then I have my graph made. Next one, a slope of 0, so y equals 0x plus 3. 0x, like we saw in that other problem, is kind of ridiculous because that just becomes 0, so it's really just y equals 3. This is my y-intercept. A slope of 0 is a horizontal line, and this is what y equals 3 looks like. It's a horizontal line because you don't go up. You only go across. So the rise is 0. And 0 divided by any number is just going to give us 0. Okay. Now, the next two skills that we need to take a look at are when we need to rearrange the form, because it's not in slope-intercept form, and then how to write the equation from a graph that's given to us. So here, sorry that I keep moving my screen. When I look at this, to put it in slope-intercept form, we want y to be by itself. So this 2x is basically on the wrong side of the equation. This equation is actually in standard form. So if I go ahead and I subtract 2x on both sides of my equation, purposely to get y by itself, this equation now becomes y equals negative 2x plus 3. Now it's in slope-intercept form. I can see my y-intercept of 3. I can then go ahead and graph my slope of negative 2. So from that point, down 2 to the right 1, down 2 to the right 1, and so on. Okay, so rearranging an equation and putting it into slope-intercept form means to just get y by itself. So now if we take a look at a couple of practice problems here, um, to get y by itself, I would need to subtract 2x. So if I do minus 2x, minus 2x, I then get 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. What would I need to do next to get y by itself? Divide both sides of my equation by 3. And if I do that, I get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 6 divided by 3 is 2. We can then go ahead, graph the y-intercept of 2. We can then graph our slope of negative 2 thirds. That would tell us to go down 2 units to the right 3 units, or up 2 to the left 3, and then we have our line. Next one to get y by itself, we would subtract 5x. Notice when I'm subtracting the x values, I'm putting them in front because slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to keep that negative 5x in front instead of sending it to the back of 8. Divide both sides by y. I'm sorry, 4. So I get y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 2. Plot my y-intercept of 2. Plot my slope of negative 5 fourths. So from this point, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and graph my line that goes right through them. Awesome. 
Okay, given the graph. So if I give you a graph and I ask you to write the equation of that line in slope intercept form, we have to do two things. We have to figure out what the slope is. We have to figure out what the y-intercept is. Best way to figure out the slope is just to do rise over run. So I always say to my students, find two guaranteed points. So I see this point and I see this point. And then simply count from left to right. I have to rise one and then I would need to run two. So my slope is one over two. My y-intercept is this point where it crosses the y-axis. That's at the y value of two. So once I have that, I can write my equation. It's y equals one half x plus two. That's it. Let's try a couple new graphs here. So here, my first one has a slope, let's see, up one to the right two. So this has a slope of one half. My y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis is right here at one. So my equation is y equals one half x plus one. Next one, my slope from left to right, I'd have to go down one unit. So that's a negative one and then run one. So negative one over one, which is just one. My y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis also happens to be negative one. So my equation would be y equals negative one x minus one, which is really just y equals negative x minus one. Negative slope, y intercepted negative one. Last one, my slope here, I'm going down one unit, then I'm going to the right two units. So my slope is negative one half. My y intercept where it crosses the y axis is right here at negative three. And so my equation would be y equals negative one half x minus three. Thank you so much for following along. I hope this video was helpful for you.